Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the concrete block generator to create the perfect custom brick for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to get the final material into your 3D software. All the settings I'm going to show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. You can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya, or Cinema 4D, or if you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, you can just use the generator in Substance Player, which is where I'm going to demonstrate it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download. Uh, I'll be sure to include a link to it and the relevant add-ons in the description below. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings. Most importantly, the resolution of the final textures. Now by default, this is set to 512, and this is so the viewport updates nice and fast while you're making alterations. We'll increase this number to around 4K when it's time to export, but for now I'm going to set it to 1024, as that still runs pretty nicely on my hardware setup, whilst giving us enough detail to, to see what we're doing. There is also a random seed value here, which will basically create a completely different version of the current material based on all the settings below. Next we have global parameters. From here we can choose our workflow, either metallic roughness or specular glossy. Now this is an important one to get right, and it will depend on what application you're using. In Blender, for example, it's best to go with the metallic roughness workflow, as that is what the principal shader works best with. However, let's say you're using uh, the Corona renderer, you'd be better off using Specular Glossy. Um, chances are you already know what one works best for your software, but if you don't, please feel free to contact us uh, and, and we can advise on that. Now the rest of the controls in here relate to the general sizing and shape of the bricks. We have sliders for uh, horizontal and vertical brick amounts, an offset adjustment to change the layout of the bricks, a slider to introduce some randomness to that offset, and finally a control uh, to adjust the, the, the width of the mortar, the, the space between the bricks. Okay, so the next category is where we can start to alter the overall look of our bricks. First up, here we have a surface, which allows you to change how sandy the bricks look, change some of the surface details on the bricks, and whether or not there are visible pebbles within the concrete. You can also adjust the layout and size of those pebbles from the section below that. Next we have some settings to adjust the roundness and softness of the edges. With some minor adjustments here you can get quite a different look to the edges of the bricks. In, in condition we can set how damaged the edges of the bricks look. Uh, this can help when you're trying to make a more eroded, weathered sort of look, um, especially when used in conjunction with some of the dirt options that I'll mention in a bit. Next we can change the colour of the bricks to pretty much anything we like, uh, though I'd recommend to make sure you pick a, a realistic colour based on reference images, um, if you're aiming for photorealism anyway. Finally, in the microsurface category we can adjust the roughness, how shiny the bricks will look. Uh, you'll likely want to keep this setting relatively high, um, keep a sort of rough look, because um, uh, it's worth noting that if, you, if you're going to aim for like a, a wet look, then um, we, have, we have separate controls for that, which I'll cover towards the end. Okay, after that we have some similar controls for mortar. Uh, we can adjust both the colour and the roughness levels for that separately. Now, finish allows us to add a, a, a painted effect to these concrete bricks. Once enabled, these other sliders appear, and we can control the colour of the paint, the shininess of it, the uh, and the effect's completely separate from the roughness settings for the bricks themselves, which is important because this next section allows us to control coverage. Um, from here we can choose between a completely painted wall to one where half the paint has scratched off. Um, you can create some really cool variations here. The age category basically allows us to add in various types of dirt. We can control the sort of general dirt amount as well as add in top and bottom grunge. Uh, to, to save having to manually add that in later. Um, from here we can also add in an overall wetness effect without having to manually adjust settings elsewhere. So yeah, that's, that's a summary of all the controls within the concrete block generator. With all these settings there's really a huge amount you can do to generate all sorts of different textures. Now I'm going to quickly cover uh, exporting so you can take your finished materials and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a plugin directly within your application, um, rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Now here in these shader settings, we can adjust the normal format. Depending on your render engine and software, you may want to adjust these. I, for example, use Blender, 
for most of my projects and for that you'd want OpenGL. So I'm going to set that now. Uh, we also have some controls for making overall adjustments to ambient occlusion strength and normal map intensity. I'll leave those where they are. Right, before we open up the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of the settings panel and set the resolution to what we want our exported textures to be. Uh, I'm going to select 4K and then head over and click on the export as bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window and from here we can set up our export. By default, all these various texture types are available, but I'm going to disable a few and just export the base color, normal, roughness and height textures as they tend to work great in Blender as is. Next, let's head up to the file type drop down. Uh, I tend to go with TIFF here um, for the extra color depth and uh, the, the lossless format. And then the only thing left to do is set the export folder. Once that's done, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. And that's it. From there, you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.